Good morning, everybody. Thought I would quickly um, show you guys the um, power supply we're working on. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video. The um, idea being that I wanted to, well, I had a bit of a project to work on, as you guys know, and um, I'm working on the second ver second phase of Kremobot to to show you the. Um, and I'll, I'll do a couple of videos eventually um, where I've done the conveyor belt and um, done all of that. Right now I want to quickly take you through um, the power supply I've been working on. Um, it's been inspired by um, Dave Jones from the EEV blog. He went through a couple of um, sessions where he designed a um, power supply circuit from, from scratch. Um, I was really, really interested until he got to the um, battery powered option, which I think, um, you know, judging by the fact that he's not completed it and, and <laughs> his, his um, frequent ranting about it, he's, um, he's sort of feeling the same way. But um, the point, I suppose, being that I like the project, I think it was really cool, except for the battery powered option. Um, the idea with me was I wanted a power supply, I want a bench power supply, so I will go and um, design one. I've taken quite a lot um, of his designed, design um, decisions so far. And what I want to do is I want to go through the process of designing one myself. You'll see in a bit, I've tried to keep it modular. So in the modularity, I'm hoping to maintain the original idea where, you know, if you want this thing to be battery powered, battery backed up, that's all possible. Um, I don't need it battery backed up. I will be running it from mains. Um, and also, if you, um, if you want to add components to it, remove components from it, etc. So, that said, let's get into it and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, Let's start off with just a quick SketchUp model. So this is a very, very early draft of what I'm, what I'm thinking of. Um, and this design has changed significantly since. But there you can see what I mean by the modularity of it. Um, the bottom board will be um, the raw power supply. So this takes from directly from the transformer, um, does the, the full wave bridge rectifying, um, has all the bulk capacitance on it to smooth it out. Um, that then gets sent up to the actual power supply unit. So this is a bit that's very similar to what Dave Jones has built. Um, this does the um, actual variability of it. So inputs in the front, outputs in the back. The idea here is that all these little studs fit into that stud. Um, so modularity in that way. Then what you can, oops, what you can see in the back is um, a, some header pins and the idea is that these also connect into one another um, the top board is effectively just the um, Arduino shield there's a LCD connector in the back um, buttons and stuff so as I said this this design has changed significantly and I'll show you a little bit of the new new circuit diagrams and then just like a normal Arduino nano on the top of that um, I opted for that instead of the onboard um, Atmel chip, um, again, so that you can make it modular. If you wanted some other controller that you wanted to use, just connect to the pin headers and off you go. I will be using the um, USB um, connector on this to do PC interface like I've done with Kremobot. Um, and I'm also planning to add a, um, a LAN connector to this, which I haven't quite... I'm not quite com comfortable with with all that entails, but um, you know, we'll we'll that's part of the design effort, I suppose. I still need to understand that and make sure that all works together. So, to that end, um, if we have a look, this is the general idea, right? I want a on-off button, LCD screen, volt and current, so voltage and current um, current limit setting. And there's my normal 0 to 20 volt, my sense line, my ground line. In addition to that, I wanted a static 5 volt, a static 3.3 volt, and the ground for those. But what I'll also do is I will be feeding the 5 volt through to a USB connector for simple powering USB. Um, 
this is a this design uses the um, Nokia 630 display um, but I might opt to go for a much simpler um, two-line LCD on this on this one but um, as I said as the design continues we'll, we'll sort all of those things out there's my current li current limit LED so if the circuit goes into current limit that lights up and what I also wanted to add is an output toggle um, so in other words I can preset the voltage I want and only once I turn that on with a backlit LED will the, will the um, load actually be um, powered um, what I haven't designed in, what I, probably the steps I want to get into um, later on is pulse width modulation and temperature sense which I, I so that I can drive a fan so that it doesn't go full ball all the time so it's just a little quieter single transformer I'm hoping to use a um, center tap transformer um, and actually use the, the, the full tap as well as the center tap center tap will give me 18 volts and the full tap will give me 36 volts and that all drives through there right um, so as you can see my original before I even done any calculations I put two big capacitors on you that was the one option to do that um, but what I have decided in the meantime is to actually spread um, those that capacitance out of it so here you can again see the form factor of the board, right? So there's our incoming lines, um, two sets of bridge rectifiers. I need a 15 or a 16 volt section and a, a 30 odd volt section. Bulk capacitance for this section because I want to drive three amps um, as a maximum current. And um, through the, the 16 volt version, which will power the two switch mode regulators for 3.3 and 5 volt, they can each do one and a half amps, so four caps at a thousand mic is enough to to keep the ripple current low enough for for those um, chips to to work successfully. Right, so a couple of design constraints. You'll see the mounting holes there, 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 and there. These are exactly the same holes for the Arduino Nano, and they follow through all the board, right? So effectively there will be a, a single set of mounting posts and all the board, boards will fit on top of one another. Again, these, um, so these will come from the transformer, they'll be, allow me to bolt that on there nice and tight. Um, these I'll use metal standoffs um, to connect this board to the board above, right? The board above looks, so there's our power supply board. So as you can see, I haven't completed this one. Um, I'm planning on using 10 3080 LT 3080s. They do 1.1 amp each, um, and I just simply parallel them up um, to give me 3.3 amp max output. Um, this board I still need to, to complete. You'll see there's a whole lot of unrooted bits still. These are the connections from the, uh, from the bottom board. So again, same thing, 30 odd volt ground and the 15 volts. Um, and they go through, so these guys are sent through three sets of shunt resistors so that I can just monitor the current through them. I'll go through the circuit diagram for these in a bit more detail. Um, as you guys can see there, there's the three distinct sections. There's our, I think, 5 volt section, there's our 3.3 volt section, and here's our variable power supply. Here's the connector through to um, the bottom board, and there's our uh, yeah, I don't see my LAN connection right now, but we'll get back to that. This might be a slightly older version of the of the, part of the circuit. Um, and then finally, I've got the control control board. There's my Arduino again with the mounting hole straight through. Um, this, as you can see with the previous version. Um, Sorry. As you can see in this board, there's our mounting connector, or our inter-board connector to the controller board. And if we go up to our controller board, that connects in there. There's the holes for the Arduino again. So this time, what I've done with this one, I've moved connectors around a bit. There's my LCD. Um, there's the two connectors for the opt-in encoders for voltage and current. There's some... Um, 
over um, output enable LED and switch um, current limit LED um, a mode LED and a mode switch which I'll get into a bit later here's just a trimmer part for the LCD brightness and here's our LAN connection out to um, to the back and of course this board also has a USB which will fit, fit through to the back um, yeah so that's that's the design at the moment um, ah here's my obviously on the control board when I, when I said earlier the, sorry the actual power supply board um, I won't have my LAN connection but that's over there there's my LAN connection there's my interboard connection LCD there's my Arduino etc so that's the design that's the design so far um, I'm hoping to get get this a little more finalized um, I am planning to go to Australia on a business trip in the next little bit and hopefully I'll actually buy a, quite a few of the parts and bits um, while I'm there simply you know for, for the prototype simply because it's a little cheaper and closer to to the source when you get it in um, in Australia it's a little hard to get these things at, at affordable prices in South Africa um, I will get South African suppliers when I when I'm done with this if I needed more than one, one or two of these um, but yeah I'll take it from there the one one additional little thing that I'm thinking of doing in this in this power supply is to actually build a um, a dual supply so the idea with a with a LAN connection in the back is so that you could collan, connect um, to say two of these devices together and the idea then is if I put two of these together I could have a positive negative um, power supply alternatively you could have a higher voltage supply or you could parallel them up in um, using and then use a, a 6 amp supply 30 volt 6 amp supply the the idea of course with the LAN is just to connect it to up so that you have a single master unit which could then potentially drive the other unit um, in sync um, so if I want um, you know so that ends the mode switch you could potentially put these two together and have a, uh, uh, a single ground but both of them will then run if I set the one, the, them to 15 volt the other one would be negative 15 volt and they'll remain in sync in that way um, not quite sure of that yet I might initially just build the first one up and then play with the software I have tried to keep the ground isolated from, from mains earth so anyway let me know what you guys think um, if you think this is a worthwhile um, project to carry on with I will be you know putting the designs online I'll show you guys what I'm talking about um, suggestions welcome but I do want to try and avoid um, the same trap that Dave Jones fell into so um, keep the comments coming um, but be gentle right <laughs> um, I'm going to try and work through this methodically make sure I get it right the first time um, but I'll, I'll take you guys along for the ride if you're interested if you like this video give it a thumbs up um, and send me some comments thanks guys